It's a call that's telling me I'm here to serve. It's a need to make a difference in the world. 24 hours, day or night, these healing hands will make it right. Looking in their eyes, I know that I'm changing lives, changing lives, changing lives for the better, for the better, changing lives. Hi again, everyone. I'm Candace Kruger along with Jim Knox, and we're back again with another edition of the Best Docs Network, featuring some of the best physicians in the Houston area that are helping to change people's lives. And happy holidays. We hope you're all enjoying your holiday season. Exactly right, Candace. Happy holidays to everyone out there. And you know, of course, this is the show that helps a lot of individuals find the right doctor, because a lot of these doctors have helped individuals change a lot of their lives, including our first doctor, bariatric surgeon, Dr. Robert Marvin. I had the gastric sleeve, uh, it's where they go in and they remove about two thirds of your stomach and it didn't involve any rerouting of the intestines, which is what I really liked about it, so I didn't have malabsorption problems. I went in one day, did it, stayed that night, went home the next day. The difference with the sleeve uh, compared to the gastric bypass is that there's no malabsorptive component to the surgery. So it avoids some of the long-term issues that can happen with a gastric bypass. In particular, there are very few uh, vitamin and mineral deficiencies later because everything goes down the normal way. A lot of patients feel comfortable with it. They know that there's not something that probably may have to be taken out later on. The weight loss is very good. It's comparable in our patients to a gastric bypass, probably within 5% to 10% uh, weight loss compared to the gastric bypass, which is the gold standard. Last month we went on vacation. We were gone for 12 days up to the East Coast area. We walked through the Arlington National Cemetery, which I wouldn't have been able to do a year ago. The operation, we like to say, is not an end in itself. It doesn't take care of everything. It won't lose weight completely on its own. But what the operation does do is it gives the patient a lot more control than they have before the operation. If you do the things that you've been trying to do to lose weight, if you exercise fairly regularly and consistently, even if it's not a lot, you will lose a lot of weight. If you eat right, if you decrease the percentage of carbohydrates and fats in your diet and increase the percentage of proteins and limit the total number of calories, you will lose a lot of weight. It makes the good behavior a lot more successful than it was before the surgery. First of all, it's a tool, it's not a, a fix. Dr. Marvin and his staff will get you there. They will walk you through it. Make sure that you are taken care of, that your needs are met too. And that's what's so great about Dr. Marvin and his staff. It has made a tremendous difference in my life. 12-year-old Kyle loves to play baseball, but it was hard to do due to allergies. That is until he met Dr. Lynn Dickens. To find out more about Kyle's story and other life-changing stories, log on to BestDocsNetwork.com. My name is Rashid M. Rashid. Uh, I have an MD and a PhD. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Went on to medical school at Loyola University. I did a, a combined degree program. I did um, an MD and a PhD at the same time. So it took me seven years. Uh, normally, if I had done them separately, it would have been a 10-year program. Um, I've always had a very strong interest in research. Um, I really like to understand where the, where the information we use comes from, why we use the information we use, and why things are happening. Uh, you know, I, I trained at MD Anderson, so when I did my training there, I had the opportunity to do rotations in clinics around the country, including at UCSF and other clinics that specialize in hair loss. Uh, so it always fascinated me to be in this area where few people were in and where it really matters to people. It really matters to people that they're losing their hair. And yeah, we have um, over um, almost 70 peer-reviewed papers all in, in, in journals that uh, have very strict uh, criteria for publications. 
um, including national journals uh, like academy journals and, and our specialties uh, in dermatology and medicine, trauma uh, across the board. Um, our hair loss uh, papers mostly uh, focused on things like other peripheral associations with hair loss, like vitamin D deficiency. We have a paper that, that is um, often cited about vitamin D deficiency in hair loss. We do a regular daily um, auditing of the peer-reviewed research and we regularly review and examine what's out there. We consolidate that, we provide that in, in an updated blog we have online uh, and it basically summarizes all the main uh, new research ideas that are coming into place or that are just being developed um, by scientists and physicians around the world. So our, our method is called the follicular unit extraction. Um, that's been around for a few years. It used to be done manually, hair by hair. It would take a long, long time. Now we have different devices and machines that have sped up the process. So we can do larger cases in less time. And the price is also more uh, you know, acceptable to people than it used to be. You would get more hairs, uh, get back to work, and a lot less downtime. And the healing is very, very quick. For more information on any of the outstanding doctors you see on today's show, don't forget, head to the website, bestdocsnetwork.com, bestdocsnetwork.com, the number one video source as far as educating the public in the medical field. Right now, time to head to our next best doctor. It's Dr. James Ludwig. Jill came to see me for hearing loss. And then while she was here, she was also talking about, she told me she had some allergy problems, and then also um, the snoring, and, and uh, it was feeling like she had insomnia, and she couldn't stay asleep during the night, she was tired during the day, wake up with a dry mouth. I think you have sleep apnea. I'm going, oh, what's sleep apnea? He said, well, sleep apnea is where you, you don't get any REM sleep, and you, you don't sleep well. Are you tired a lot? I said, I've always been tired. We obtained a sleep study and found out that she had you know, a lot of sleep fragmentation from snoring and from uh, sleep apnea. He said, well, we'd like to do the second test, of course. We diagnose the fact that you do have a sleep apnea. So, went in another night, electrodes, but I had a mask this time. And I fell asleep. I woke up the next morning. I w and it was like, wow! I mean, jeez! It was like, I am so rested! So he didn't have to do a hard sell or anything with me. I mean, he said, you need a BiPAP machine. We've decided that, and this is why. And he sat down and explained everything to me. If you have the other effective treatment option, and you decide to have surgery, and there's a, something that I think that we're going to do that has a good chance of making you better, then let's do it. But for some people, that's just not their best interest, you know? And she's happy, you know? Jill sleeps every night, has no complaints. She loves it. It's safe. It's effective. It's guaranteed to work. Are we going to beat that with a surgery? No, we're not. My coworkers at the time noticed an immediate difference between, I mean, I didn't tell them what was going on, but they noticed an immediate difference in my demeanor and my approachability. <laughs> if that therapy makes you feel great, I just think that your opinion of that therapy is going to change, right? Now, if you can't use it, you know, you're claustrophobic, and there's you have an obvious anatomic problem, and sure, let's go down this other path and we'll make you better. But better and perfect aren't the same, you know? It's made a great impact. It's, it's really, um, the only thing I miss, and this is gonna sound crazy, but I'm used to having 22 hours in a day, as opposed to 16 or 17, you know? And I can't get as much done as I used to get done because I'm sleeping, but the trade-off is great. Alcohol has some good and some bad to it. The good is that they say that red wine prevents some heart disease, and I think that's true. It helps reduce the amount of LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, and increase the amount of HDL, which is the good cholesterol. There are downsides to alcohol, though, also. There's a lot of alcoholism in this country that we don't appreciate. Many people are alcoholics and don't even know it because they function so well. You don't have to be sleeping in an alley to be an alcoholic. One question you should ask yourself to see if you have alcoholism is, have there been many times in the past year when you have drank more than five drinks in a day as a man or more than four drinks in a day if you're a woman? The general recommendation for alcohol intake is that men can safely get away with one to two drinks a day and women a half to one drink a day. This may be good for you in some ways and if you stay under that limit, you won't get into the bad level. You ought to check with your doctor on this and ask him or her about that, especially if you have a family history of alcoholism. Uh, 
in October of 2011, I was diagnosed with um, stage one breast cancer and was advised that I needed a lumpectomy with internal radiation. Maybe a gut feeling kind of told me that I needed a second opinion. After looking at all my history, she actually re recommended a bilateral mastectomy with reconstruction. So that's what I did on April 3rd of this year. Breast reconstruction is a very rewarding uh, surgery that we do for the patients. Um, it's uh, women who are going through you know, some of the most difficult times in their life. They've been given a diagnosis of cancer and been informed that they may lose one or both of their breasts. I came and talked to Dr. Feldman about the whole process and of course I was nervous and I know I even started crying at one point, but he was so, so supportive and just um, assured me so many times I would be in good hands and that I would love the results. And So she uh, chose to have an expander, an implant-based reconstruction and uh, that uh, allows her to have a reconstruction that doesn't have a second surgical site. So uh, rather than having to use muscle from her back or from her abdomen and impacting her golf game or her or yoga or her active lifestyle, um, we're able to use uh, implant-based reconstruction, which is a, a very nice uh, result with really nice technology that's available to us now. Just fabulous, yes. And he, he did a great job and I had total confidence in him. And I've been feeling actually pretty good. I'm, kind of wanting to get out and play golf, which I haven't been able to yet, but actually I feel really good. Every patient has individual concerns, and whether it's lifestyle, whether it's recovery, whether it's, you know, can they get back to their job or take care of their kids, that's something that we take into consideration with every patient. The surgery's gone so well and she's so uh, confident with her results um, that she wants to be out and, get, and, and move on with her life and put the cancer behind her, and, uh, and we've really been able to deliver her uh, a nice result that she's able to, to do that with. So many exciting things have happened since then. Not only the good prognosis with the surgery, but we're, we're engaged now. Um, hopefully my daughter will be graduating from college soon and I'll be able to retire early next year and kind of just move on with my life in a, in a positive, positive direction. If you've had a doctor help change your life, we'd love to hear about it. Send us an email at info at bestdocsnetwork.com. Dr. Meredith Morgan is one of the best physicians in helping women manage menopause. Practicing for over 35 years, Dr. Morgan, as you see, has a unique office. It's located in the Museum District, a freestanding facility with a relaxed atmosphere. Today's topic, perimenopause. It's really important to understand that this is a normal process and it happens with all women. It starts in their mid-40s, the average age of onset is 47, and on average it lasts about four years. According to Dr. Morgan, perimenopause represents a change. Women will experience a number of symptoms. This is a time of relative estrogen deficiency and brings on mind, mood, memory, and even sleep disorders and irregularities. Um, yes, there are hot flashes and night sweats that most women think of as menopausal, and yes, they can be just as severe as the postmenopausal ones, uh, but the differentiation between transitioning and a non-cycling constant state is the unpredictability and uncertainty that can be so distressing to a woman. For women experiencing perimenopause, Dr. Morgan outlines the next step. We have three levels of management. The first will be basically lifestyle uh, adjustments and home remedies. The second is non-hormonal medical prescriptions. And the third is hormonal management. Uh, we want to treat at the lowest dose for the shortest duration, consistent with what the need is. Uh, we have to understand it's important to use what is acceptable to the woman herself. In my mind, without a doubt, we've taken a step forward for the city of Houston and its surrounding environments. Uh, we've developed a site that is comfortable and convenient that provides medical center quality with minimizing the hassle that's involved. Uh, it's been very rewarding to have done this for the last 10 years and I'm looking forward to the next 10 and 20 years in continuing to do and help women throughout the entire region. 
Don't forget, for more information on any of the great doctors you see on today's show, head to the website, bestdocsnetwork.com. That's bestdocsnetwork.com the number one medical video source as far as educating the public. And our next best doctor who's changing people's lives is radiologist Dr. Stephen Rose. To be a comprehensive breast center it doesn't mean having a nice building and a, na a nice name on the, on the center. There's a lot of people that have done that. What makes you a comprehensive breast center is working with other physician specialties together to do the best that you can possibly do for each patient. It's important that when we find an abnormality that the radiologist understands the pathology, knows what to biopsy, when to biopsy, and then can communicate that back to the referring physician, communicate it to the patient, and communicate to the pathologist what our concerns are. This is what the beauty is of a comprehensive breast center. So it really means working together as a team, working with your breast surgeons, working, working with the pathologists, working with the radiation oncologists, the plastic surgeons, and we work as a team. When people come to Topps Comprehensive Breast Center or if they come to one of our Memorial Hermann Breast Centers, what they'll see is a group of dedicated breast radiologists. So when they come to one of our centers, they're dealing with a radiologist who is focused on finding cancer at the early stage. And one of the things that we talk about as a group, we want to disrupt as few lives as possible while finding cancers at their earliest stage. That's our mission statement. If someone comes in and we have a finding on the mammogram or they come in with a palpable lump and they need an ultrasound. In many facilities, this is performed by a technologist. The doctor may or may not ever see the patient. If they do see the patient, they only look at the area of interest. It is our policy and our practice that radiologists comes in on every patient. We scan every patient ourselves. We, yes, our technologists look, but we scan every patient. My strong belief is, and I think statistics prove, prove that, is that when you have specialists doing this, you get a better result. In our practice, that's what we do. That's the whole focus of our practice. You know, it's a very special group of people from all over the country from very well-trained facilities, and uh, uh, so it's an exciting group to be part of. Kimberly, who loves to travel due to her job, could hardly walk due to severe foot pain until she met Dr. Gabriel Maslow. To find out more about Kimberly's story and other life-changing stories, log on to bestdocsnetwork.com. Sharon, she is special in the sense that she was having a hysterectomy in addition to a tummy tuck. So she's, again, had children, had some uh, loose skin, and uh, wanted to uh, have that improved and had the opportunity to do that at the same time as she was having a hysterectomy. When I first came to see Dr. Ravella, it was um, when I was about to have another surgery done. I was going to have a hysterectomy done, and it was something that I was very passionate about. Um, I had tried to lose weight and couldn't um, get rid of the stomach, the stomach bulge. So I uh, came to see Dr. Ravella and the staff. Typically it's someone who's after finished their childbearing who will come to us for a tummy tuck. And they might have excess skin that overhangs in the, uh, on the bottom of their tummy area, around the belly button and below. They might have some stretch marks we remove the excess skin, and then by lifting up that skin, we see your whole rectus muscle, which is the solar plexus. And by pulling those together with suture, it can become firm, firm, like to bounce a quarter off of it. I was completely impressed with um, how much caring he has for his patients and the staff has. Everybody was very supportive. Each woman had a different recommendation um, of what made their life easier or what they've seen patients have an easier time with. She's now several months out, has lost several sizes, and in addition to the result of the surgery creating an um, improved body contour, it's actually inspired her to lose more weight in, on, her, on her own, so she looks even better. I definitely feel like I have had a new lease on life, um, that I did definitely have a jump start. Um, I feel more confident. Um, this was done completely for me. Um, I didn't do it for anybody else. And in my line of work, 
um, that definitely helps uh, to be able to go out and speak confidently to individuals. So it has improved uh, my confidence tremendously. As always, the Best Docs Network features some of the best physicians in the Houston area that are helping to change people's lives. Like our next best doctor, gynecologist, Dr. Liebman. Probably for the better part of 10 years, when I would call for sneeze, I would release urine. The leaky bladder is extremely common. And I think one of the biggest issues is that women just don't like to talk about it. They think they have to put up with it or they're somewhat reluctant to talk about it in the office to, to their doctor. It finally got to the point where it, it was interfering with stuff. I had to carry extra underwear and clothes to work or I'd have to go home in the middle of the day. And it was, it was I don't think anyone ever noticed, but I felt embarrassed and uncomfortable. And that was what finally made me decide to get tested to see if my problem was due to um, the incontinence that this would fix. The procedure now is also a minimally invasive procedure and it involves placing a small piece of mesh underneath the urethra, that's the tube that goes from the bladder to, to the outside, and it, it forms just a hammock or sling underneath the urethra and when placed correctly it, uh, it has an over 90% chance of success. After I had it done, I told Dr. Liebman I wish I had done this five years ago because it, it made that much of a difference. And, but I thought I was too young, and so I convinced myself, oh, this, you don't have this, it's something else. This isn't going to fix your problem, and so I just didn't ever talk to him about it. So I should have talked to him sooner. The recovery is, is also just wonderful. It's done as an outpatient. This procedure is still done as an outpatient in a in a uh, outpatient facility or freestanding outpatient clinic and uh, the patient will go home again have something to eat maybe take some pain medicine but very little discomfort associated with it i sneeze nothing not a single drop and that's it's been two years now i mean it's completely changed my life very little discomfort associated with it and what's really nice about it is that it's effective immediately. If it's going to work, it's, she'll tell you the next day she hasn't leaked, uh, much to her surprise. Tiku broke his jaw growing up and his teeth never lined up until he met oral surgeon Dr. Paul Metz. To find out more about Tiku's story and other life-changing stories, log on to BestDocsNetwork.com. I wasn't able to eat. I wouldn't travel with my husband because I was afraid. What if something in my mouth broke and I was overseas, what would I do? Five dentists told me I was an impossible case. She had uh, severe atrophy, we call it, of the upper jaw from uh, wearing the prosthesis for so long. And she had uh, m multiple missing lower teeth. My mouth never felt clean. I had no confidence. Um, I wouldn't get, get around a lot of people and I have a big personality and that upset me because I couldn't get around a lot of people. And so what we talked to her about was reconstruction of the entire uh, upper and lower uh, jaw and, and we also did uh, bilateral or both sides uh, sinus grafting. What this, uh, it's a sinus elevation procedure where we lift up the, the uh, membrane that's in the sinus, we put synthetic uh, bone in that, in that uh, uh, area and uh, allow that to solidify, then we can come back with implants and have a, much, uh, have a, a good base for the implants to fuse to the, the synthetic and host bone. It sounds horrible because the surgery, it looks scary. Compared to the pain that you've gone through not having teeth, it was no big deal. In this world, maybe nothing is permanent, but in our view, um, if the implants are placed properly, if they're restored properly, and they are maintained properly, they should last the patient indefinitely. I'm more healthier now. I'm not eating pizza and french fries and bread and cinnamon rolls. I'm eating fruit and carrots and all the vegetables. I just can't believe I've, and my taste, my, my mouth feels clean all the time. 
we're interested in, in restoring patients' self-confidence uh, and also their quality of life. And uh, so we're interested in both the, how it looks and how it works and how it functions. When he did the surgery, I felt like I'd known him for 100 years. He was just that awesome. And he, very, he doesn't tell you anything that he doesn't believe. It's very, it's very emotional for me because I never dreamed I'd be able to have this done. Your thyroid gland is an important organ. It's right here, right in front of your windpipe. Now, many people can be low on thyroid, that's hypothyroidism, and that's the most common type of thyroid disorder. And there's also hyperthyroidism, an overactive thyroid. That's less common. The hypothyroidism is more common in women, but it does affect men, and it can cause symptoms such as weight gain, fatigue, thick skin, coarse hair, constipation, all kinds of things, all of them involved in slowing down of your bodily functions. Now, if that's the case, you go to your doctor's office, they draw what's called a TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. That will be low, and then the physician can start you on a medication that will improve your thyroid hormone level in your body. Your metabolism will come back to normal, your weight may go down, your skin and hair changes will get better, and your energy level will respond. Now, if you're hyperthyroid, overactive, that can be a problem with heart problems. It can cause atrial fibrillation, which is a rhythm disturbance. It can cause excessive uh, anxiety, as well as high pulse rate and trembling. So if you have any of those symptoms, get your TSH checked by your physician. A bunion deformity is a deviation of the first metatarsal and the second metatarsal. So basically, you know, what people see of their big toe is this. So the big toe is pointing this way, and this bone is going out this way. When it's not matching up well, you get bone growth. And so bone starts to build up right here, and it also starts to build up top. I spend about 85% of my time traveling, so I'm in and out of the airports. Um, as a training manager, I do a lot of facilitation. So I'm on my feet a lot walking and it got to the point where even flat shoes, what most people would think is comfortable shoes, um, became, became painful. Her surgery was an awesome bunionectomy, but it was a little bit different because uh, on the x-ray I discovered that she had severely arthritic joint. She had fracture fragments. So these fracture fragments never heal. And because they were constantly moving, it was severe pain. It caused an enormous amount of uh, bone growth on the top and on the side. So I was really excited to do her surgery because I knew it would provide immediate relief. I'll be wearing the boot for at least another four weeks and then I'll come back for another reassessment. Um, and then he'll determine then whether I can take the boot off and then just start walking in normal shoes. People always ask, you know, why do I have this problem? And uh, the biggest component, genetics. So if you look at your parents' feet, or your grandparents' feet, it's basically telling you if you see a bunion deformity that, that your chances are your feet are gonna develop these structural deformities. But then, obviously, for the females, it's wearing the high heels. You know, it's, uh, there's a price to pay for high fashion. You wear the high heel, uh, it puts your foot in position, which makes predisposes you for, to a bunion deformity. Well, I would love to be able to get back out there and be pain-free. A lot of times, I couldn't wait for the day to end because I would be in so much pain. So I'm looking forward to being able to be on my feet for longer period of time is pain free. The look on the patient's face when they come in and they see the results and they're happy with the results and they see that instead of having a crooked toe or that it's actually straight and that the pain that they had before is gone. So you know that's the rewarding part to me. Well that'll do it. That'll wrap up another edition of the Best Docs Network featuring some of the best physicians in the Houston area that are changing people's lives. And for more information on any of the outstanding doctors you see on the program, head to the website bestdocsnetwork.com, the number one medical video source in educating the public. And as always, if you have a question or comment, we'd sure love to hear from you. Send us an email at info at bestdocsnetwork.com. Happy holidays everyone. We will see you next week.